In the previous part of this section, we looked at how biomimetics can be used to copy the surfaces found in nature and imitate their special properties. In this part, we will look at some more examples and look in more detail at how we make and use biomimetic surfaces. The term biomimetics can mean different things. Sometimes it will refer only to the replication of the idea or theory behind a surface found in nature. Other times it will mean the creation of an exact duplicate of a surface by taking a mould of the original. Replicating a surface exactly using a mould can be done using various materials. A common material used is polyvinyl siloxane which is the same material used to make dental moulds, as well as polydimethyl siloxane, also known as PDMS. First, an imprint is taken, creating a mould. The replica surface is then created by curing a material against the mould, like an epoxy resin. As we have seen previously, shark scales, called denticles, are present on almost all of a shark's body. The effect of the scales is a reduction in drag. The grooves present on the denticles run parallel to the flow of water when the shark swims. These grooves reduce the formation of vortices around the shark's body and as a result, water flow is less turbulent, reducing the shark's drag. Shark scales have also evolved to prevent biofouling. Biofouling is the build-up of algae, plants, animals and other organisms from the sea on a wetted surface. The trapping of such objects can reduce the efficiency of a shark's swimming. This anti-fouling behaviour is due to the shape of the scales, which have been found to resist adhesion from contaminants. Biofouling is an expensive problem for ships and boats, whose fuel efficiency is significantly reduced by fouling on the hull. Consequently, research has been done to attempt to replicate the non-fouling nature of a shark's skin. The shape and pattern of the grooves on a shark's denticles means that there is a high energy requirement for contaminants to attach to the surface. This discourages colonisation by microorganisms or algae. By looking at the ratio of the height and widths of the grooves, materials showing similar anti-fouling properties have been developed. Such materials have also found uses in hospitals and health facilities because they can inhibit the growth of bacteria. An innovation in nature is the evolution of hierarchical structures such structures have multiple layers at different length scales. For example, a lotus leaf has both micro and nanoscale structure, with microscale pillars covered in nanoscale hairs. The hierarchical structure provides two scales of roughness, increasing hydrophobicity and leading to the superhydrophobic effect we see with the leaves. The effectiveness of multi-scale structures has been demonstrated in research papers where it has been shown that surfaces that combine micropillars with nanofibers have a higher contact angle and lower contact angle hysteresis with water compared to equivalent surfaces with only micropillars or nanofibers. Recently, research has been made into the plant species Nepenthes commonly known as the pitcher plant. These plants are carnivorous and rely on an inner leaf surface which is extremely slippery to trap prey. Here we see a scanning electron microscope image of the inner leaf of a pitcher plant. The surface becomes slippery after secretion of liquid which embeds into the porous structure of the leaf. The liquid layer then lubricates the leaf surface to the extent that animals who go onto the inner leaf are unable to climb out and slide down the liquid film to the bottom of the plant. 
At Harvard University, studies into this phenomenon has led to the development of new slippery liquid-infused porous surfaces, or slips surfaces. Slips surfaces have been lauded as superior alternatives to lotus-like hierarchical superhydrophobic surfaces. Slips surfaces start with a porous or textured solid, which is then lubricated with liquid. This creates a liquid film upon which liquid is immiscible and will slide off easily. For lotus leaf-like surfaces, it is the structure of the surface itself that is responsible for water repellency. However, for slips surfaces, the only requirements of the solid are that it is preferentially wetted by the lubricating film, not the liquid introduced onto the film, and the lubricating liquid must embed into the solid. These requirements can be met relatively easily and consequently it is argued that it is simpler to create a slips liquid repellent surface than a lotus-like surface, with the right combination of solid and liquid film. To achieve this, the solid and liquid are required to have similar and very low surface tensions. Slips surfaces have also been found to perform better than traditional superhydrophobic surfaces in repelling liquids with lower surface tension values than water, like crude oil, hydrocarbons and blood. The Cassie-Baxter regime found on lotus-like surfaces is not stable and the air pockets are easily penetrated by lower surface tension liquids, like oils. However, with slips, the surface does not rely on the Cassie-Baxter composite surface. Instead, it has a homogeneous liquid film. As a result, the mechanism by which slip surfaces repel liquid is not compromised by low surface tension liquids. In this section, we have defined biomimetics as the imitation and replication of systems found in nature. We have looked at several examples from nature, including both plants and animals, which exhibit attractive properties like liquid repellency for the lotus and pitcher plant, drag reduction and anti-fouling for sharks, and adhesion for the gecko. In some of these studies, exact replicas of surfaces have been created using moulds, whilst others have taken inspiration from the structure and theory behind surfaces to create their own man-made versions. The applications resulting from biomimetic studies in many cases go beyond what nature intended, demonstrating the innovation and versatility of the biomimetics field.